RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com for everything Royal Caribbean related. RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Happy Monday, everybody. New week, new opportunity to talk Royal Caribbean with all of you guys. Thank you for joining us here on YouTube. Every Monday, we're live right here. When we're not live on YouTube, we're over at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com to hang out. And uh, we are back in our studio. I got off Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas this morning. Stinks. I wish I was still back on a cruise, but we had an awesome time. Uh, I was on there for three nights. You may have seen our live fireworks stream last night here on YouTube, and uh, it was great. I mean, it was phenomenal. Three nights, first Royal Caribbean cruise from the U.S. in 15 months. That was awesome. Felt great. And uh, I'm ready to make up for lost time. So we're here also to answer your cruise questions today. And, and got many questions I'm sure we're going to ask, but there's only one that's the most important. How many days until your next Royal Caribbean cruise? Have your countdown and chat right now. Let's count down together. Um, I actually, uh, many of you are going to ask Matt, how many days till my next cruise? I actually don't know. Uh, I have a number of book. No, I have cruises booked, but I'm not sure which one I'm actually going on. Like I'll actually sail on next. So I have a lot of these like placeholder cruises that I booked months ago and like whether or not, you know what I mean? I think some people can relate to that. So I honestly don't know when my next booked cruise is ovation August 13th, but I'm not sure I'm actually going on that. So we'll have to see. I'm, I'm not making any commitments. I'm not. You know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Josh Carruthers with our first super chat of the day coming in. Thank you, Josh. Woo! Uh, welcome back. Thanks to the live streams this weekend. 123 days till my next cruise. Thank you so much for your generosity. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's good to be back with you guys. Let me tell you this thing. It's much easier to do these live streams from my studio, but I'd much rather be on a cruise ship. <laughs> so yeah, and I've got a lot of... Uh, a lot of content for you coming up on RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com this week. So, uh, Brogan, how was the boarding experience in Miami? Extremely easy. Um, sorry, there's something in my mouth. Gross. Um, other than that, other than the uh, the fact you had to, you know, if you declared that you were vaccinated, you had to show that in the beginning. Otherwise, pretty much the same. Very, very easy. Uh, Terry, are all your deposits refundable? Yes. I rarely, if ever, book non-refundable deposits. Sometimes I do. Like, if I book a cruise and we're within final payment date, I'm just going to make non-refundable. There's no point. But if I have, like, if there's months to go until final payment, I always book refundable cruise fare. Um, let's see here. We got a question from Mike Jackson. Uh, Jay from Ship Life reported there was a fire in Odyssey next to the bumper cars. Any update? No, I don't have anything to, to share. So I'll just leave it at that. I don't know. Not all fires are major, but I hope everyone's okay on there if that is true. But I haven't heard uh, so anything one way or another. Uh, Paul, how far out from your cruise date will you be allowed to check in? You know, that's a good question, Paul, because there pre COVID, it was really set, um, a, a time frame. Now it's not so clear, Paul. There isn't a set timeline when that would occur. So you gotta, you gotta keep checking periodically, which is not the answer you're probably looking for, but Vasily, why vaccinate crew members with face masks? I was vaccinated. I had to wear a face mask on board too. It's just about, it's about federal protocols more than anything. The CDC. Gary Miola Jr. with the super chat. Thank you, Gary. Here's a few bucks to help pay for your next drink package. Thanks all the great content over the last few weeks. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we have a woo, slap your grandma. It's that good of a super chat. Sharon Stockman. I don't I have like an effect for this. Did that work? I don't know what that did. Well, if it did anything, there you go. Sharon, 160 days, a little waste of the seas. Sharon, thank you so much. I was talking about you. Last night on Freedom of the Seas, Sharon, with your travel agent, and she was like, please, if nothing else, book a December group cruise for Sharon, and I was like, trust me, we're going to make that work for Sharon. We're going to figure out a way. Kim Oakland with an epic super chat. Woo! Thank you, Kim. I've been enjoying cruising vicariously through your live streams. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. I always appreciate your support. I'm glad you're enjoying all the live coverage from Adventure and Freedom, and Jeff Leonard with a super chat. Woo! you jeff all your live streams made my wife and i so jealous we had to book oasis for some everything how long is that cruise jeff is that a seven night cruise it's out of a bayonne right man i i got i'm i'm jones and for if there's like something I, I gotta i gotta book something i have odyssey booked that same weekend but i'm not sure I'm able to go on that but i gotta get something man i can't go like two or three months without a cruise like, i i i gotta i gotta i gotta work for it right Jessica Freeman, where do I start looking for a travel agent in my area? Good question. Honestly, I don't think it matters where your travel agent lives. 
in this day and age, travel agents are still very important. You know that, Jessica. I've, I've talked about that. But I don't think it matters where they live, whether they're on the East Coast, the West Coast, um, in your same country. doesn't really matter that much. Um, their location is irrelevant. Most travel agents, a vast majority, work virtually, meaning they're not in like a brick and mortar office. So I wouldn't worry about that, Jessica. I would look for a good travel agent with a good reputation that can work with the way that you want to work, you know, in terms of what you prefer, you know, tax messages, phone calls, whatever. That's what I would recommend to you. And of course, full disclosure, our sponsor of our travel agent sponsor for RoyalCoveringBlog.com is MEI Travel. Uh, Justin, we're staying in a two-bedroom suite on Adventure. What kind of suite changes are there? Uh, I stayed in that exact room configuration on Adventure of the Seas. The only change I noticed was there's actually upgraded a new brand of shampoo and conditioner and body wash, which is really good. So I like that quite a bit. Um, it made no noise. Yeah, I don't know. I got to look at that, Steve. It's kind of weird. I wonder. I'm not going to spend too much time on it right now. I know the problem. That's an easy fix, actually. Okay, now it should work. Maybe. I don't know. I'll, I'll take a look at it. <laughs> we need a slap grandma emoji. It's so good. Yeah. We, we got, we'll work on that. Scott, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for all the videos lately. Loved the fireworks last night. You're very welcome. That was so awesome. So glad you guys enjoyed it as well. We had, obviously, a great crowd in our chat, and it was absolutely beautiful. And I, I listen... Very few times I've ever seen Royal Caribbean do fireworks, and they did a great, great job of that. Terry Simpson, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Our next question today comes from Angela. Traveling with grandkids on Independence Days in May, will Royal Caribbean put kids' size life jackets in the suites? Uh, I think you got cut off there. But yeah, um, your stateroom attendant can definitely help you out with that. But yes, they'll definitely cater to the children, not to worry. Not only that, Angela, they'll have, even if, you know, in case of an emergency, they would have kids' size life jackets at your muster station as well. So don't worry too much about that. But yes, they'll, you can definitely talk to your, your stateroom attendant for you and they can definitely help you out with that. Um, Sarah's got a question for us. Says, hey, Matt, the new class of ships are epic, right? So excited to see what they're going to be doing with this ship. So Sarah, Sarah's talking about the icon class of cruise ships, which is the next new class. So when we talk about class, we talk about, you know, the freedom class, the Oasis class, the quantum class, but there's going to be a brand new class of ships called the Icon Class. We don't know a whole lot of details about them. It's going to be about 5,000 passengers, which makes it bigger than the Quantum Class, smaller than the Oasis Class. It's going to be powered by a combination of uh, LNG, liquefied, nit liquefied, um, liquefied nitrogen gas. I, I'm, I'm messed. It's powered by LNG and uh, fuel cell technology. Uh, and it's going to be, the first one's coming out in a couple of years. So it's kind of interesting. We don't know many details about it, but we're going to know more obviously, uh, very, very soon. So looking forward to seeing that. Yamel is here, says, hey, Matt, thanks for answering your feedback. Do we need to purchase the internet package using the Royal Caribbean app on board? You do not. You do not need to purchase any internet package in order to use Royal Caribbean's app. Jason Lickert is here. Hey, Matt, uh, was going to search this for the site, but when in Rome, uh, have you heard anything about if, if having COVID will work instead of vaccination for reduced restrictions? No, my I have not heard anything along those lines, Jason. My understanding is you're either vaccinated or you're not. Um, they're not, I don't believe they're accepted. I could be wrong on that, but I have not seen anything specifically mentioning that scenario. Let's put it that way. Um, but of course, as you know, protocols are changing like all the time. Uh, let's see here. I think I missed liquefied na natural gas. Thank you. Liquefied. Thank you. LNG. I just had like, my brain just was like liquefied. All right. <laughs> Liquefied natural gas. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Shout out to Commander. Good to see you. I think I missed a super chat along the way here. Did I? Oh, no. I'm good. I'm caught up. Okay, cool. Uh, back to your questions. Good question here from NWO Dispatch. Will the Windjamere return to the way it was, or is it the way now with crews serving the guests will stay to stay? Good question. Um, I suspect at some point it'll go back to the old way of guests serving themselves. I'm not sure when. Um, but you know, I think like many protocols on board, it will all be based on, you know, when the health and the science says it is safe to do so. That being said, the crew serving guests in the Windjammer buffet really is not bad at all. I actually like it. I think things move faster. There's a lot less of this, like, you know, honey, do you want some ribs? What you want ribs? 
Who's dibs? Ribs. Meanwhile, I'm waiting for my ribs, right? It, it, it moves a little bit faster right there. So, uh, Paul's got a question for us. I'm booked on a lure of the sea, September 5th with a guaranteed ocean view balcony. And anyone will find out as well, given capacity, any thoughts on the quality of the cabin we'll get. Good question. More than likely, you're going to get an ocean view balcony. And I'm more than likely, it'll be a great room. I wouldn't worry too much about that. When they, first of all, Rowan's not divulged any capacity numbers. They're not really publicizing in advance, like what percentage of a ship that you're, whether it's uh, allure or freedom or adventure, they're not giving those numbers out in advance. Like this week, it'll be this percentage next week. It'll be that percentage. Um, they seem to be playing that close to the best. I don't know why, but that's what they're doing. So the answer is you may not find out until you actually get on board the ship, uh, what to expect. But in terms of doing a guaranteed balcony or guaranteed room type, which is where you tell Royal Caribbean, you pick the room and in exchange, you get a bit of a discount. Most of the time, people are quite happy with their selections. There's very few rooms that are just like, Ugh, you know what I mean? Like, no one's ever like, oh, gosh, that was a terrible choice. I wish I had picked my own. It's more of a question, honestly, Paul, is if you're very particular about your room location. But I suspect if you booked guarantee, that's not the case right there. A uh, few Embrace says, uh, question for you. Are paper menus no longer used? Here they want you to use the app. They're both are available, actually. And you can ask for the paper menu. I do that as well. So no problem at all. So they'll have the QR code on the table at any restaurant you're dining at. But you can absolutely ask the waiter, hey, can I get a paper menu? And they will give you one that you can use if you cho so choose. Just by default, it's QR codes. That may change going forward. Um, there's actually a really interesting. I'll have up on the blog in the next couple of days here an interesting interview um, with Royal Caribbean's head of, well, he's got a very fancy title. But essentially, he's in charge of all the tech on Royal Caribbean, among other things. And he was talking about how the QR code sounded like a really good idea until you actually sit down. Part of being at a restaurant is holding that menu. And he said, listen, I love tech as much as anybody. I'm paraphrasing here. You know, I love tech as much as anybody, but the paper menus are the way to go. So you can definitely ask for them, and that may come back sooner than you think. Um, yeah, Zach, it's not Gilcrest and Holmes, Soames or whatever it was called before. It's a new brand. I like this one way better. They're these big, colorful bottles. I wish I had the name of them, but uh, yeah, I like that. Brady, does Royal Caribbean have rollaway beds or cots for kids that don't want to sleep in the same bed with each other? Not necessarily, but don't forget, Brandy, there are other bed configurations you may be able to get. Um, you have the Pullman beds, which the beds come from the ceiling. There's sometimes the sofas will open up into beds themselves. So when you're booking a room, look for those bed, those room configurations so you have extra bed choices. And also, in addition, Brandy, by default, the regular bed, like in the room, the main bed, can be split apart. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, traveling Better is here. Hello, Traveling Better. What port of calls is going to be the most restrictive and least restrictive as far as protocols? Um, boy, that's a good question. You know, Cozumel requires masks everywhere you go, like outside and in this summer heat and humidity. That's the issue. Otherwise, it's, I mean, I've only been so far to Nassau, Freeport, Coco Key, and Cozumel. So it's not like I've been to many, but Cozumel, because of their rules, seem to have the the most stringent rules, if you will. It's not that bad, but hey, Shannon Ford is here. Shannon, by the way, runs a great YouTube channel, and we got to hang out a little bit at Playmakers on board Freedom of the Seas, and uh, shout out to Ryder, who should be asleep right now. Ryder, go to bed, but uh, good to see you, Shannon. Hope you're doing well, and it was a lot of fun getting to know you on board. Let's do it again really soon. That'd be great. Chip wants to know, how long do I think Royal will be selling with a reduced capacity? It's a great question. I Now, listen. Reduced capacity means if they're selling at 99% capacity, that's reduced capacity, right? Um, but I think there'll be reduced capacity for a while. I think they're going to slowly ease back. I don't know when that'll whether that could be, you know, fall, winter. I, I think, quite frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see full capacity until maybe even early next year. I don't know, Chip. I think a lot of it is going to be simply based on federal guidelines, right? What the CDC is saying, what they're seeing on, in their own, like, you know, what's manageable. They got to get, you know, to some extent they have to get crew members back to, you know, have enough crew to staff up, right? The, the increased amount of, of, of guests on board because the ships are not completely fully staffed. Like it's not the hundred percent crew on board. Right. Um, but I think that's more of a lesser issue in my opinion. I think really the issue is just what the, what the regulations are and what they're seeing is they, you know, they Royal Caribbean seeing as manageable. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Mike's got a question for me. I need to drink appropriately enough. Recap the diamond drink is a four or five that are loaded on the sea pass card. If your diamond is four, if your diamond plus, it is five. There you go. 
Um, Tammy says, I heard most of the shops are still closed. But are, uh, most of the shops at ports are still closed. Is that true? Um, do you mean like in port, like in Nassau or Cozumel? No. Um, in Nassau, they were closed. when I, I got off the ship to get batteries, and I got off the ship about 9.30 in the morning. Uh, a lot of shops were closed. It was a little too early. But by 11, 12 o'clock, a lot of other things opened back up. So there was a lot more choices there. Um, in Cozumel, Tammy, you really wouldn't have known they've been shut down for a while because all the shop, pretty much all the shops were open. There's always, you know, some exceptions out there, but yeah. Joe Reynolds has got a question. Is the steam room and sauna at the gym open or do they have them closed off? They're closed off because of COVID. Um, they're still there, obviously, but Chuck is $79. A good price for the Coco Beach Club is a fantastic price. Anything below hundred dollars, definite thumbs up. I would book that now and decide later because a lot of the prices are way, way higher. We've got some uh, super chats coming in here. Our first super chat is from the legend himself, Ron Ladowski. Woo! Thank you, Ron. Thank you for the video podcast the last three weeks. Thank you for the updated about the latest mass requirements. There's a lot happening. I got some more updates for you tomorrow. But yeah, big news out there. Ron, thank you so much, my friend, for your generosity. Very, very kind of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm glad you're enjoying the content. Got more for you, just for you, Ron. Everyone else, you know, eh, but... And MJ dropping a super chat. Just a simple hello. Well, just a simple hello back to you, my friend. Hope you are well. Uh, hope you enjoy the best pizza in all the world in Connecticut. And uh, good to see you here. NYC lover for life. Question, was Giovanni's table menu on adventure the same as Freedom? No. Freedom is a brand new menu. A br they redid the entire restaurant on Freedom of the Seas. In fact, Freedom of the Seas is the first Royal Caribbean cruise ship to have this new Giovanni's Italian kitchen concept. So it's a completely new revamp menu. Uh, you know, the, the, the adventure Giovanni's menu was okay, but the one on freedom is absolutely fantastic. I loved it. I'm going to go on a limb here. This is one of my new favorite, especially restaurants. I love the changes they made to Giovanni's table Italian kitchen. It's so good. I I'm, I'm a big, big fan of it. And I really can't wait to get back over there. I mean, I went there twice in the three nights sailing. That's how much I liked it. So, uh, good question here from Richard. Matt, how much, on average, do you think you save on a suite by booking next cruise on board? Zero. Yeah, so you don't actually save any money by booking on board, Richard. What you get, like, there's no discount on your cruise fare. But what you do get, Richard, is onboard credit to spend. So you'll get whatever, you could book the cruise at home or on the ship. It's the same price. The difference is by booking on board, Richard, you'll get bonus onboard credit. And that can be very lucrative. So you're not going to save any money like, you know, like your cruise fare doesn't go down by booking a suite on board, but you will get extra onboard credit. But again, what I always tell people is this. Don't if you're if, don't wait to book a cruise on a cruise ship. If you're on the ship and you're hanging out with Shannon Ford and you're like, Shannon, this is so much fun. Let's book another cruise together. Right. And then you, then you decide, OK, let's go to the next cruise, book the cruise. That's fine. That's a great idea. You should do that. But if you're sitting at home right now, which is a pretty solid if right you're probably sitting at home right now book your cruise now message shannon to book the cruise but don't wait to book it because if you wait the price can go up heck it can sell out so that's why i'm saying don't do that hope that makes sense uh next question is from lana shaven hey matt booked adventure from uh, nassau july 31st ship looks so quiet should be worried kids will be bored no my kids had a great time on board there's a lot to do mini golf water slides adventure ocean the arcade, they're not going to be bored. Uh, and Perfect Day, Coco Key, they're going to thank you for taking them on board. So, Tiffany Parker, what should you recommend for someone who's never sailed Royal Caribbean? I think it's a great question. I always recommend the Oasis class ships um, or, or Quantum class ship. Seven, uh, around, you know, maybe between around seven days is what you really want. If you get a seven night cruise, Oasis or Quantum class ship, I think that's a perfect choice for a first timer because it offers the most variety of things to do, the latest and greatest that Royal Caribbean has to offer. And in addition to that, you're also going to get seven nights, just enough time to kind of mix it all in and, and have sea days and port days. Those three and four night cruises go by so quickly. As a first timer, you just don't get enough time to, to really experience what cruising is all about, in my opinion. So we have our next super chat coming in. It is from Brian J. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it, buddy. Hey, Matt. If you will hit the next tier on Crown and Anchor during a cruise, we're going to honor us at the start or need to wait till the actual day it occurs. Uh, neither, Brian. You will get it on your next sailing. So Brian is asking, if you're Emerald right now and then you go on a cruise next week, 
and on day three, you turn, you have enough points now to become diamond. That's great, but your diamond status doesn't start until your next sailing after that. Does that make sense, Brian? Probably not the answer you wanted to hear, but <laughs> that's the that's the answer. Uh, Yamel, does the Spa and Freedom offer any discounts for massage while at port? You know, on Adventure of the Seas, they were not. Um, they were not doing any of the deals because there weren't as many people on board, so they couldn't really offer them. Um, I don't know if that'll change, but yeah. And Teresa McShane, very good point about, remember about the next cruise office? They do offer reduced deposits there as well. It's another benefit of booking out there. But again, I don't, don't wait to book. If you know you want to book, book now. But if you're on the ship and you're having a great time, you want to book another one, great. Then go to the next cruise office and take advantage of that. And next question is from Jessica. Is it true you shouldn't be charged by the travel agent for booking your cruise vacation? Yes. I, I know there are some agents that charge. It's In my opinion, it's wrong. You, sh you, as the client, should not pay any fees for using travel agent services. Uh, no, If the cruise line charges you a fee, that's you know like that, that's the thing, right? But there should be no add-on fees. There's no service fees. Any travel agent charges you service fees, don't use them. I'm sorry. There's plenty out there that don't charge you a service fee. It's it's a lame. I, I know with COVID and all that, they try to sneak that in there. All travel agents are hurting, but you shouldn't have to pay that at all. That's my opinion, but I'm telling you that right now. There's plenty of other fish in the sea for that one. Uh, Scott is here. Scott's got a question. Were you able to get on the ship before my time? Just a few minutes before, not like a couple hours before. They're very stringent about the boarding times. They really want to enforce those. So, and yes, they will turn you around. When I got to, Scott, when I pulled up to Terminal A in Miami, there was a guy over there, and he asked, "What time is your is your time?" I got there at like one fifteen, and my time was two. And he's like, "Listen, they'll let you in like maybe ten or fifteen minutes early, but that's about it." And I was like, "Okay, I'll just sit in my car and you know go on Facebook for a couple minutes, right?" Um, that was fine, but but yeah, they're very very stringent about that. I see Jennifer Kellen from MEI Travel is here. Hello, Jennifer. By the way, Jennifer does not charge services for her fees. Just putting that out there. Danielle, is it hard to get one of those beach beds on the pool deck? You know, with reduced capacity, not really, Danielle, but you got to be a little active. People go, those are the first to go. So if you want one of those, you want to wake up a little early, get one of those, assure them of you, and you're good to go. Lonnie Simpson wants to know, is the water park included in the beach club, the Cocoa Beach Club price? It is not. They're two separate entries, two separate costs. Um, and speaking of that, um, Jessica wants to know, how much is the water park Coco Cocoa Key as a part of the package price? Um the cost varies, Jessica, from sailing to sailing. So you have to look in the cruise planner after you book your cruise, and it'll give you the price in there. It really runs the gamut of prices. It could be as you know cheap as I don't know, you know, fifty or sixty bucks, as much as a hundred and something dollars. It just it's all over the place. Um, but when you buy the admission, if you want to go to the water park, it's just the water park. If you want to go to the Cocoa Beach Club, it's just the Cocoa Beach Club. So I think I missed a uh, super chat here. Uh, oh, I missed, I missed one. I'll go back to it. Uh, bear bowl cruising. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. And I missed one earlier. Hang on a second. I missed, uh, oh, there it is. Brian J. Uh, thank you, Brian, for the super chat. Appreciate it, buddy. Hey, Matt, if you will hit the next year in crowd and anchor. Oh, we talked about this, Brian. Did we, or did I already answer this one? Never mind. We already talked about this. I'm sorry. Let me have another drink of water. Catch up here. Danielle wants to know, can I use the coffee select card for Starbucks on board? If your ship has a Starbucks location like Harmony of the Seas or Navigator of the Seas, right? Like it's got the Starbucks logo on there. It says Starbucks. The answer is no. The coffee select card is for use on Royal Caribbean coffees, premium coffees, like a Cafe Promenade. Now, Danielle, if you're on a ship like Freedom of the Seas, where I know on Adventure they have this, actually. Adventure is a better example. At Cafe Promenade and Adventure, they actually give you the coffee in a Starbucks cup. That's okay because it's not really a Starbucks kiosk because there's no, if you look around, you won't see the Starbucks logo anywhere other than on, other than on the cups, but that would work. I, I know it's kind of confusing. So, but if it's actual, if you look at the deck and plan and it says Starbucks, no, that doesn't work over there, but you can use your Starbucks gift card if you want to pay for that. That'd be okay. Uh, Dan's got a, a question. What should we do in Costa Maya? My favorite thing to do, Dan, is to go uh, book is this independently, not through Royal Caribbean. But to book Maya Chan, it is a uh, all-inclusive uh, place, not a resort, but it's a be all-inclusive beach. It is fantastic. I love it there. I've been going there for years. That's what I would recommend. Suze, how do I sign up for my time? So if you're talking about like how do you go from traditional dining to my time dining, your travel agent can do that for you. When you're booking your cruise, it's an option in your reservation. But if you're asking like how do you sign up for a time, like I want to eat at six o'clock on 
day two. You can do that through the Cruise Planner website. Log into Real Recruiting's website. Go in there and uh, select your time, and you're good to go. Uh, Sue wants, so, not Sue, I'm sorry, Subzippo, when you refund a refundable cruise, you get the refundable cruise surcharge back as well. You, you get your whole deposit back, Subzippo. So if you have a refundable cruise fare and you're before final payment date and you cancel, then any money you paid Royal Caribbean for that deposit, or if you even paid it all in full, it all comes back to you. No cancellation, no change fees associated with that as a refundable fare. Um... Tim says that my check-in time was 11.30 and people were there with 1 o'clock and 1.30 and they had them stand off to the side. And I don't know when they let them in because I was gone by then. Yeah, they really are very stringent about those check-in times. So, absolutely. Hey, Tom, what's up, man? Such a different background. I like yesterday's background better. I do. Yep, yeah, I absolutely w- I wish I was back on Freedom of the Seas, man. I really, really do. So, hey, Melody. Uh, Matt, have you had a chance to put up the Daily Cruise Cup on Royal Green blog? Not yet. I have for adventure, yes, but the new ones are in my backpack. I got them. I'm going to have to scan that in, Melody. Do me a favor. Please remind me of that because, you know, sometimes I'm busy with other things. I just, like, I literally hadn't even thought about it at all today, but I do have them. They're in my backpack, so I just have to feed them through the scanner and take care of that. So it will get done. I promise you that. Sorry, my pop filter is getting in the way there. Uh, Travel with Wendy, you are very welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Uh, Let's see here. Oh, we got a... A birthday shout out. Joe Floyd's my brother's birthday. He's a real fan. His name is Nick Gurr. Nick, happy birthday, man. Hope you enjoy it. Um, Mike wants to know, how is the Diamond Lounge different now? Uh, there are two primary differences I can think of. One is that the 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 food and this coffee machine, they're all served to you. you they're not self-service anymore. So there are specific hours for the coffee machine, as an example. And, of course, the other one is that it's not unlimited drinks in the diamond lounge anymore you probably already knew about that mike but otherwise you know same thing they kind of move the chairs around a little bit but pretty much the same thing uh tanya says we we're on a back-to-back freedom can you book your second cruise especially dining while still on the first cruise i tried this on adventure and they told me no come back on the first day of the of the other cruise so um the answer for for when i was on adventure this is the answer was no I'm not saying that you might have different luck if you tried um but from what I understand, the system kind of locks them out until the next sailing, so they weren't able to do it even if they wanted to. But if you're doing a back-to-back ton, just go there on that turnaround time. After you get back on board for cruise number two, before any other guests get on board, you'll basically have run of the mill right there. So uh, I think we have a super chat coming in. It is from Keith Rickman. Hey, Keith. Love your content. Booked on a Waste of the Seas in June 22 to Canada from Bayonne in a Sky Suite. With my wife and her mother, Ooh, yikes. Needless to say, I'll be using my premium beverage package. Cheers, Keith. Thank you for the super chat, buddy. Good luck with that one, my friend. Uh, good luck in... <laughs> uh, just wasn't, what's it, but about the suite lounge? What's different there? Same thing. Exact same setup. There's somebody there to man the coffee machine, the uh, hors d'oeuvres they serve in the evening. Also, they'll serve you instead of you picking out of them. Otherwise, pretty much the same. So, um, we got a question here from a uh, few embraces. You know, what about the check in time if you have the key? I don't know. Royal Caribbean hasn't brought back the key yet. So, we haven't had a chance to actually work that out, so to speak. Um, Chuck wants to know Is there an issue getting an adventure of the season hotel check in later than the time you selected? Is there an issue getting the adventure of the seas, the check-in late? So you want to change your time? No, Chuck. Well, all you have to do, if you go in the Royal Caribbean app in on your phone and you go to your set sail pass, there's an option in the app. You'll see your set sail pass like you're complete because you already did it. But then click on edit the the check-in and you can select a new time. Basically, you can change it later on. It's what I'm trying to say. So hope that makes sense. Uh, 12th man. That's the one. So there he is. 12th man proud. Hey, Matt. Do star class get Starbucks for free, freestanding kiosk? Yes. My understanding, if I'm not mistaken, I've talked to a couple of, if, my, if memory serves me correctly, the answer to your question is yes, that is included with it. I think there's an exception, like souvenirs, like if you buy like a Starbucks cup, obviously not. But if you buy Starbucks drinks, I believe that is the, that is included with star class. Excuse me. Getting choked up thinking about star class. Um, my understanding is yes. Please, someone in, in the chat, correct me. If uh, if if I'm wrong on that one, 
Yeah, Keith is definitely going to use the drink. He can need the drink package. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Candy Chan, what's the capacity on Freedom? I don't know what the percentage was, but there were a little. There were like eleven hundred people on board, from what I was told, and ninety three percent of them were vaccinated. So that's pretty good. Pretty good, right there. All right, guys. Um, if I missed your question, feel free to type it back. I know I missed a lot of questions here. So if I missed your question, please feel free to retype it in chat so I can catch back up with you. Uh, Mike, you told me about the dining at Azumi only wants sushi. How does this work? And is it a limited cost? Yeah. So if you want just sushi, you pay per item. So you order one roll, 10 rolls. You pay for each roll uh, individually, if that makes sense. Um, it's not unlimited. You pay as you go with Azumi Sushi. Uh, let's go to our next question. It's from Anu. I want to book a cruise for Royal Caribbean next year, but there's so many ship changes lately. I want to go on a specific ship. Should I wait to book? Booking comes with plane fare and everything. I would say, in general, your best bet is to always book. If you want a specific ship, book it now. Obviously, things could change. Yes, it could be canceled, or you might have to book again. But in the grand scheme of things, I would still book the sailing that you want now. Lock in the price. Make sure it's all good. The room you want, all that. And then see what happens. I mean, yeah, nobody can predict the future, Anu, but it does that doesn't mean that you should kind of hold back on it because I think if you hold back until you're very certain it'll go, you might lose out on the room you wanted or even more likely the price will go up before that or could even sell out. So definitely. Uh, Lioness Teresa, is the dinner buffet still closed in the Windjammer? It is. It is indeed. Uh, Basun, is the dining package worth it for an eight-night cruise on Symphony? It, let me put it this way. A dining package will absolutely save you money on a cruise. The issue is, of course, for you is, well, you know, it's it's a lot of food. It is a lot of food. I mean, they're not skimping on it. Eating at a special restaurant every day for dinner and on sea days for lunch, like food fatigue is real. Like you will literally be like, oh, gosh, I can't eat anymore. I don't want to eat anymore. Food. I just want to eat like a piece of pizza and that's it, you know, but you pay for the dining package. But. It's a great way to experience all the restaurants. Symphony has a ton of them. So it might not be a bad idea if, from that standpoint if you're kind of new to it. But bring your stretchy pants. Bring your stretchy pants right there. Brogan, when do you think they'll announce protocols for Harmony in August? I mean, listen, they've been announcing protocols like a week or two before the first sailing, Brogan. So it's entirely possible it'll be like a week or two before the first sailing. You never know. <laughs> Stacy, is it over 14th? Harmony's first U.S. sailing. Do you think it'll be canceled if they can do a CDC test cruise? I don't know, Stacey. It's a great question. I, I honestly have zero insight. I don't, I don't know anything more than you do. So I certainly don't want to throw out predictions based on absolutely nothing. Um, so I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Alex wants to know, with the dining packages, is there an unlimited? Yes. So you these days, Alex, these have a lot more. But I think these days, you basically are seeing on most cruises an unlimited dining package and like a three-night dining package uh, as an option there. So that's essentially what they're offering at this point. Uh, Andy wants to know, can you get milkshakes and Johnny Rockets with the drink package? Yes. Keep in mind that they may or may not require you to pay the cover charge to sit down there at the restaurant. Kind of depends on the crew member you talk to. But yes, uh, if you do pay the cover charge to sit there, good news, you will get your uh, milkshake included with the drink package. Absolutely. We have another birthday shout out today. Birthday shout out to Leone Marie 17. Wow. That's a, that's a big birthday right there. Uh, next year, 18, parents going to kick you out of the house, give you 20 bucks and say, see you later. No, that's like, I'm probably, I don't think that's going to be your parents, but uh, <laughs> happy birthday. Hope you uh, got a cruise for your birthday. Cause I mean, you know, purse, car, eh, who needs that stuff? You want a family cruise for your birthday. Am I right? Of course. Of course. Uh, is Starbucks part of the drink package? No. Um, if there's a freestanding kiosk, blue eyes. Like really again, the Starbucks kiosk, the logo. No, that's not included for the drink package. But if you're going to Cafe Promenade and you order a latte, a macchiato, that is included as part of the drink package. I know it's kind of confusing there, but essentially how it works. Uh, Ron Ladowski will do some firsthand knowledge about Starbucks. Someone's got to do it. Thank you, Ron, for taking it upon yourself. This this heavy burden that has fallen upon you, sir. Harvey wants to know, will Sweet Class receive priority embarkation? I That's a good question. I don't know. We haven't had a Star Class ship sail yet, um, so we'll have to wait and see on that, Harvey. I, I'm not entirely sure yet. I can tell you this. When I sailed on Adventure of the Seas, 
uh, when I was in that was a that was in a grand suite, and then on freedom in a junior suite. Uh, in both cases, my status as a suite guest did not mean I got any like I still had to do the check in time, still had to do it the old fashioned way. So there wasn't any benefit there, but that's not star class. That's I know that can be different. So let's wait and see. Queen Pete wants to know: Do you think it will be fireworks perfect day on Labor Day? I would love it. I don't. I don't know. I think fireworks. I, I, I don't know. The list puts it this way. I'm going to make this very clear because I don't want to mislead you. A, I have no idea. B, Royal hasn't said anything. C, there isn't a precedent for it. So I hate to say. I think the reason we had fireworks were, were it was July 4th, but I think more importantly, Queen Pete, it was because we were. Uh, it was the first U.S. sailing, so they had executives on board. They wanted to make a big deal out of it. I think that's really what it's all about. That's why we had them. Fred wants to know, can you use the suite area when boarding? How is the suite lounge availability? On, um, on, on, uh, what was I just on? Freedom of the Seas. We, I was in a junior suite, which you get the little suite icon. You know, it's for, I can go in the suite line for check-in. I did not go through the suite area in Terminal A. Again, Fred, um, I don't know what will happen with, you know, like if, if Symphony of the Seas were there um, on Adventure. There was not a difference at all again because they were they're using the check in times to uh to to you know maintain order and 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 not have too much confusion and and, and crowding in the cruise terminal. So could that change by the time you go on your cruise? Absolutely. So don't assume just because I had that experience, it's gonna be exactly the same for you. Um Quippy wants to know was the wind jamer open uh, still closed for dinner? Yes, it was still closed for dinner. Um our unvaccinated, unvaccinated limited areas on Freedom of the Seas out of Miami in July. The answer is yes. That could change going forward, but that's the answer right now on, again, Freedom of the Seas um, uh, from Miami in July. Um, we've got some uh, super chats coming in here. First of all, let's go to Superstarian. Hey, Matt, thanks for all your kindness, especially over the last 18 months. When's your next cruise? I'm not sure. I have some cruises booked, but they're... Um, uh, my next cruise is Ovation, August 30th. I don't know if I'm going on it or not, so that's kind of the issue. Why is the uh, Wind Jamer closed for dinner? It's a capacity. There's not enough people on board to make it worthwhile, essentially, uh, in addition to crewing. All right, some super chats coming in. Teresa McChain with a super chat. Thank you, Teresa. You think your odds will be better on Royal Up bids with the reduced capacity? Yes, I do. Uh, case in point, um, we were. Just, I was just saying hello um, earlier uh, to um, uh, to Shannon. Gosh, I'm blanking on everybody's name today. Uh, Shannon got did Royal Up. She got it pretty easily. So I would say there's an increase. I don't know if that's a hundred, like significantly better chances, Teresa, but it seems to be doing, especially when you, in general, Royal Up works really well if you're going from like an inside to an ocean view or an ocean view to a balcony. Like sweet upgrades are always like just roll the dice. You never know. But for, if you're going from like a bal inside to a balcony or something like that, you might have a better shot at that. And uh, we have a epic slap your grandma. It's that good of a super chat. 12th man proud. Woo! Thank you. Um, I don't happen to my mixer here. I got to fix that. But anyway, uh, so you can't do check-in until a couple weeks before you're selling. Still can't check-in for August. Yeah. Basically, there isn't a pattern yet when check-in happens or when it's available. Um, long story short, they're still kind of working through every sailing individually. So, yes, keep checking back, 12th Man. My advice is obviously check it. I don't know if you have to do daily. Uh, maybe you want to join a Facebook group for the selling you're on and see if you can, or this roll call group on our message boards at realcreamblog.com. You know, basically group think if, if, you know, one of you checks every day, maybe one of you will catch it and alert the others in the group kind of thing. That would be my recommendation as well. Uh, any other ships doing test cruise? Yeah. Um, actually this week, Serenade of the Seas, I believe on Wednesday, kicks off her test cruise. Uh, so that's going to out of Seattle. So yeah, there's actually, I updated the schedule at realcreamblog.com for the test cruises we know about. There'll be a number of them going over the next couple of weeks. Basically, between now and September, there's like, uh, I think, four or five ships, if I'm not mistaken, that have test cruises uh, lined up. And we have one more Super Chat to get to, and that is from uh, Mimi. Thank you, Mimi, for the Super Chat. I appreciate it. Should I go on Oasis, Freedom, or Anthem? Ooh. Ooh. I mean, there's a lot of... That's a loaded question, but I'm going to... To answer your question as best I can... I would say freedom. I love the change. So Oasis and Freedom have the best changes right now in their amplifications they got before the shutdown. I really, really like what they did with Freedom. I really liked what they did with Oasis. Oh, man. I mean, it's between Oasis and Freedom, in my opinion. I've been on both. 
I think I would pick Freedom right now, but Oasis is a really good choice. It's an Oasis class ship. You can net if it's your first cruise, do Oasis class. You will um you you will definitely um not regret that. Andrew, are the fully vaccinated passengers allowed to fill their plates themselves at the Solarium Bistro and Win Jamer? No. Um anytime, Andrew, there is an there was an opportunity for self-service. There's now a crew member to serve you. So the Windjammer crew serves you. El Loco Fresh crew member serves you. Um, so everything is the crew serving you. You will not serve yourself. But that's where Andrew, if you want more, he's like, keep it. You can literally hold your play like more, more, more. Keep it coming. Keep, you know what I mean? You can totally do that. So it's not like they limit you. Be like, oh, you have to get back in line if you want seconds. You know, nothing like that. Uh, Eric says, am I correct? Am I calculating correctly? Did you gain 80 crown anchor points over three cruises? Um, let's see. The first two it would have been 14 times two times two, right? Um, and then it was cause I was in with my family, but then I was solo in a suite on freedom. So then I got, uh, six points a night, which is crazy. So six, 12, 18 points for that one. Yeah. I'm racking up the points, dude. I, I was before freedom. I was at 363 points. And I gained about 60 points. That sounds about right. I think you're right, Eric. I think you're 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 right on the money there. And Mimi with another super chat. Thank you, Mimi. And is it all safe to go during November due to all the storms? Mimi, number one, yes. Number two, there is there, just like at home, there is no one can predict the weather ahead of time. There's no guarantee that any time of the year there aren't going to be storms or anything like that. Not to worry. Royal Queen goes around the storms. They will do their best to make it as smooth as possible. But what I'm trying to tell you is there is no guarantee. There's not any time of the year that you can say with any with 100% certainty, there will not be bad weather. Just like at home. I mean, it's like saying, you know, where I don't know where you live, Mimi. But if I were to say, if I visit you in November or July or March, can you guarantee me that when I come to see you, there won't be rain? You say, of course not, Matt. Boy, who, no one can do that. Same is true on cruises. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that. Yes, it is the tail end. November is the tail end of hurricane season. But by that time, usually the tropics cool down quite a bit. I wouldn't worry about it. I would definitely go. I, it, honestly, I go on cruises all the time in hurricane season. I just got on one this weekend. Not to worry at all. They take very, very good care of you. Ben Lasky with the super chat. For the first time in a year and a half, I think you'll be able to answer this question. When do you think cruises will restart? They already restarted, dude. <laughs> they restarted like a couple a couple weeks ago. You got Adventure of the Seas out of the Bahamas, Freedom of the Seas this weekend. So they're restarting, Ben. And by the end of the summer, by the time you get to Labor Day weekend, you're going to have like, um, I forget the number. It's like uh, six or seven ships or even more operating. So uh, Brian Carnival has announced the guests can register in the 5% of non-vaccinated guests. Your thoughts? Do you think Royal Caribbean would adopt a similar policy? I don't. Um, Brian, Royal Caribbean has been very adamant that they have families on board and they're going to let families cruise. And most, the vast majority of the unvaccinated on Royal Caribbean are kids. And for that reason, uh, they feel very adamant about allowing any family who wants to cruise the Royal Caribbean to cruise so that it's not a situation of, oh gosh, I'd love to cruise, but because my kids are unvaccinated because they're too young, I can't go on there. They're not going to do that. So for right now, Be Brian, the answer appears to be no. Um, could that change? Absolutely. But they, I, I was talking uh, to a number of Royal Caribbean executives over the weekend, and they were very adamant about that fact, that this is why they're doing what they're doing. Family cruising is a major component of what Royal Caribbean does, right? Celebrity, obviously a little bit different, but, and Carnival is going in a different direction. That's good for Carnival, but Royal wants to make it, they don't want to restrict families. That's their bottom line. And so they're going to uh, go in that direction because of that. And uh, they feel very, very adamant about that. And as, as a parent, I appreciate that. Uh, Kelly, unless something has changed, no. If you're, vac if you're fully vaccinated, Kelly, Going to the Bahamas does not require you to do much other than just fill out some paperwork. There's no like testing you need to do if that's your question. Unless something has literally changed like in the last couple of days that I'm unaware of. But uh, Daniel, what would make a test cruise fail? I suppose number one, uh, an, an actual COVID outbreak among, above a certain threshold. I forget exactly the number. I think it's 10%. I forget the threshold. There is a percentage like you can't have more actual COVID cases, like real, not simulated real COVID cases on a test cruise beyond a certain one, then it has to end. The other one, of course, being the CDC, seeing, you know, protocols not being implemented properly, kind of like a restaurant inspection kind of thing. Um, so that's my understanding. Hey, Jan Fagan is here. Hello, Jen. I was able to do my check for Freedom of the Sea September 13th. Wow, that's awesome already. That's fantastic. So 
things are uh things are moving. Mr. Fred Parker, how about boarding for wheelchair to get on earlier and easier? I don't think so. I think it doesn't matter. It's just you get your check, do your check-in, Fred. Get on that app, check it every now and then, do your online check-in. If you do that, you'll be ahead of the curve. You won't have any issues, my friend. So you're good to go there. Uh, Mike wants to know, how do I get copies of the main dining room menus for Navigator November 21? When you get closer to your sailing, Mike, like, I don't know, about uh, four or five weeks beforehand, if you go in the Royal Caribbean app, a little trick for you. If you go in the Royal Caribbean app and you go to your sailings, your list of sailings there, on the bottom, it'll give you an option like uh, look for more sailings, something like that. And then you can select Navigator, even though you're on Navigator, and then pick a sailing before yours and you can see the menus for them. It's kind of a weird workaround right there. Uh, Vicky Belleville with the Super Chat. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, I'm booked on alert this season of September. Does Royal Caribbean book the, over the percentage of passengers they're going to allow? Like oversell and then, I mean, have they done that? Sure. I think this is true of the entire travel industry. Airlines do this all the time. I don't know, Vicky, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know like their exact booking trends or their strategies or how that all works. Um, I, I, I don't know the answer. I, I, I don't have a good answer for you. Have I heard of them doing things like that? Yes. Um, but I, I don't have like a a pattern or, or or definitive like here's what they do in this manner. It's not public information, really. Mark Hamill, can you order more than one entree at Giovanni's? Absolutely. Last night, Mark, we had there were two of us. We had two pizzas, two entrees, and a bunch of appetizers and a dessert. I'm still kind of full from that meal, quite frankly. So. Uh, let's see here. Amalia has got a question for me. Will Nassau, I think not nausea, Nassau be different in August. Nausea might be different in August, but Nassau in August be different. Did you suggest an excursion? I think in general, when it comes to all ports, Amalia, I would suggest planning something in advance, have a plan, book something even. So that way you're just not wasting time in port and kind of meandering or making port choices off the uh, wing. It. Um, so I would say, yeah, I would suggest an excursion is not bad. I mean, it's nice to walk around there as well. But I think in Nassau, it's one of those ports that absolutely benefits you to actually have an excursion booked rather than just wandering. You should wander around maybe afterwards just to do a little bit of shopping and, you know, uh, window shopping, browsing, and maybe get a drink or something like that. But uh, I think your best bet is to book an excursion in Nassau, especially if you've never been there before. I think it's one of those ports that really is important to do that. Um, so uh, Dan wants some of the crown and anchor points. Basically, right now, it's double points. So if you're staying in a standard room, anything below a suite, it's you and your wife. You'll get two points per night instead of one point per night, Dan. If you were to book a suite, you would get four points per night instead of two points per night, Dan. And if you were staying in a suite by yourself, like I did just this past weekend, then you would get six points per night because usually you'd get three points per night under the old system. That's under the, that's under the double points per home, which currently is running. So I know it's it's very confusing, but it's still there. Uh, let's see here. Anu says, my girlfriend is a recent breast cancer survivor. I'm thinking of doing something special for my girlfriend through Royal Caribbean during our cruise. I think it would make them ask questions. Why would, they, why would they ask questions? I mean, they want to celebrate. Whether it's your birthday, anniversary, celebrating your your, your girlfriend's major accomplishment, it's all great stuff. Um, I don't think there'll be an issue at all. They'll just want to, you know, how can they help is really the only question they're going to ask you. So, but that's really good news, man. What an awesome boyfriend. Uh, Jeff says, if the list of protocols for a ship on the Royal Caribbean website does not mention anything about masks, and I assume the mask will not be required on board. No, assume nothing. Assume the changes are possible. Assume the protocols will change. Jeff, for our adventure of the seas cruise, the protocols change like three or four times. Um, you should not assume that just because the protocols say something on day today, they won't change tomorrow, next week, a day before your cruise. I mean, they were changing protocols, Jeff, on some folks two or three days before the cruise. So there is no... No, do not assume. Assume only more changes are coming and they'd be pleasantly surprised when they don't come. That's my, that'd be my recommendation. Baby Emma is in the house. Hey, Matt, do you think the, she's not a baby anymore. I know that. Do you know what the age limit for testing on kids on board is? Um, I believe it is, you want the bottom or the top? Uh, if they're two and below, they don't get tested. And then three and above, they get tested. So one of your kids is getting tested. I think the other one's still too young, right? So I think that's, I think since I know you so well, I think that's the answer to your question, Brent. 
Uh, Josh wants to know, why is the wind chamber closed for dinner? There's not, we already answered this question, but it's because there's not enough people on board. They don't need to have dinner when you got the main dining room, special restaurants, room service, all available. So when the, I, I've heard the number I've heard is right around maybe 50% or so. When the capacity gets up to that number, the wind jammer will reopen for dinner as an option. Uh, yeah, no, Terry, um, I heard if you're sailing from the U S and visiting NASA, I heard, you know, like, no, 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 the, uh, so let me, let me clear this up. If you're, you only need a health visa for the Bahamas. If your cruise leaves from the Bahamas, you do not need a health visa. If your cruise is leaving from Miami and it visits perfect day or Nassau, that was never a requirement. The health visa of the Bahamas is only for someone who is flying in to the Bahamas and then going on a cruise from there, like adventure of the seas. So if you're on freedom of the seas or allure of the seas or mariner of the seas or symphony of the seas, and you're sailing to a uh, perfect day and or Freeport and or Nassau, you don't need the health visa. That was never a requirement because that's a whole different ball game. Does that make sense? Uh, what are we doing on time? Okay. Time for a couple more questions, guys. I'm going to run on out of here. Um, let's see. When did Oasis of the Seas get amplified? Uh, late 2019, late 2019 in November, if I'm not mistaken, uh, late 2019. Keith, I like to cruise with my friends. They're not followers. They're my friends. Yes, I do. We had a great time. I love meeting folks on board on Adventure and on Freedom. I met a lot of friends from here on YouTube. It's a lot of fun. We actually do, Keith. Uh, actually, we, we have group cruises. We have one lined up in November on Harmony of the Sea, specifically designed for this. But yes, absolutely. I love meeting pe people who love cruising. It's, it's always a lot of fun. Brittany's got a question. I have a, I have a cruise booked first week of January, flying in at 6 a.m. to our flight. My departure time is 4 p.m. Is that okay? So I'm assuming, Brittany, you're flying in, uh, like like your cruise leaves whatever day it leaves, right? And uh, the same day you're flying in at 6 a.m., I mean, you're probably okay. Uh, and then you're, I, I would, this is what I recommend, Brittany. Number one, I always recommend, no matter what, come in at least a day ahead of time. Brittany, you, you can, there's a lot of people here who can tell you, the amount of canceled flights right now is unreal. I mean, they're canceling flights left and right. So, yes, if that flight goes, you'll probably be fine. But the threat of cancellation is like huge right now. And the airlines are crazy. Um, so my recommendation, what I would say is ideally you would come in the day ahead of time, at least one day ahead of time. So that way, if your flight is canceled, you know, you can have book a different flight. Maybe the one you're booked on right now or something else. Um, you want to give yourself some leeway there because of all these unknowns. But in the grand scheme of things, especially if your plane is already there on the ground from overnight, you're probably fine. But again, my recommendation is coming a day ahead of time. Departure time at 4 p.m. flight, no problem. You'll just be sitting a lot of time in the airport. But I, in my opinion, it's better to have too much time at the airport than not enough. So, yeah, I would say that that's totally fine right there. Uh, Linus wants to know. This is a good question. I'm going to go to Linus's question right here. Why did Royal Caribbean uh, change the requirement to not accept passport cards? They never accepted passport cards, Linus. They never did. Uh, passport cards do not work. They only work for air and rail. They never worked for sea. So they didn't change anything. That was never the policy. Uh, what shows did they have on Freedom of the Seas? They had uh, freedomice.com and the ice show. They had, uh, it was the same shows they had before. Um, uh, something in time, not a twist in time, but something like that. I'll have, this, I'll have the uh, cruise compasses up, Scott, at rollercreamblog.com. But they have, uh, then they had um, uh, uh, a, a, headliner performer as well so yeah hey ryan schumann right here so ryan says hey matt met you on adventure okay ryan don't say like we met you like i said hello to you i hung out with ryan ryan is awesome he him let me say something oh boy uh first of all shout out to ryan and nick great guys we had a lot of time hanging out on that second adventure cruise you know after we got rid of deadweight don goldstein we the party really started there ryan and uh man you uh, listen, good friends are always anyone who's down for whatever. Ryan and Nick were always down for whatever. They were they were hanging out at the schooner bar, they hang out at the pub, uh, 2 a.m. in the casino bar, no problem at all. Uh, so I, I wish we could I hope we can do that again very, very soon. Because uh, you yeah, know, we miss hanging out with you guys. Hope you're all well. Once upon a time, thank you. That was the name of the show on Freedom. Piston Times. I knew the word time was in there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Josh Taylor says, uh, question, 
since you were introduced to by yourself, did you book two people and tell them at the port the second person won't be there? Yes, exactly what I did. No problem at all. I've been doing that for a long time. I mean, I really legitly thought my wife was coming with me and then they changed it over there, but yeah. Um, and I think that's, uh, I think, uh, I'm <laughs> not going on the Titanic. Andy Goyer checking in from Adventure of the Seas. I am so jealous of you. So jealous. Have a good time, man. I met Andy um, and Amanda over in Nassau the other day. It was very nice to see them. So, uh, <laughs> Don, nice, nice, nice. And last question of the day coming to us from Chris. Do specialty restaurants typically have discounted rates for the first night dining? You know, that yet, yeah, I mean, pre-COVID, that was a thing. I don't know if they still do that policy anymore, Chris. It's a good question. Like, once upon a time, they would offer that on the first night of the cruise. You go and you could, um, they would offer a first night discount, basically. Um, I don't know if they still offer that. I haven't asked, I have not asked that in a long, long time, Chris. So I don't know the answer to your question. Maybe, uh, maybe Andy can check out on like it's the only one that I know that's, that's over here. So anyway, uh, and last question, this is, I said that was the last, but this is an important one. How do you find a good travel agent? Word of mouth. I recommend and personally use MEI travel. John, if you go to real there's a big yellow form. Fill that out. They'll contact you. They're good, but word of mouth. You really, that's the best way. You know, you talk to somebody, hey, who's your travel agent? Do you like them? That kind of thing. So, all right, guys. Thank you again for so much for joining us here. Um, let's say some thank yous to the Super Chats. Vicky Belleville, thank you for the Super Chat. Mimi, thank you twice for the Super Chats. Homeland Proud, I think I owe you, like, a new car at this point. Thank you for the Super Chat. Teresa, thank you for the Super Chat. Keith Rickman, thank you for the Super Chat. Bear Bull Cruising, thank you for the Super Chat. Brian J, thank you for the Super Chat. MJ, thanks for the Super Chat. Ron Ladowski, thank you, Ron, for the Super Chat. Terry Simpson, thank you for the Super Chat. Scott Baring, thank you for the Super Chat. Jeff Leonard, thank you for the Super Chat. Kim Oakland, I think I owe you a yacht by now. Thank you for the Super Chat. Sharon Stockman, um, I think you should, like, I, I, a small corporation. Thank you for your Super Chat. Gary Miola Jr., thank you for the Super Chat. Josh Carruthers, thank you so much for the Super Chat as well. Guys, thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you all, all of you for hanging out with me here on YouTube. We're live every Monday right here, so come check us out each and every Monday as we talk Royal Caribbean together. And uh, always check out royalcaribbeanblog.com for plenty more Royal Caribbean news, information, fun advice. I hope everyone has a great week. Stay safe out there. Do something fun, like maybe booking a cruise. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Good night, everyone.